The world is in chaos. Israel has invaded Gaza. Ukraine is still at war with Russia. Don't think we've forgotten Putin. China has sent six warships into the Persian Gulf. The US has sent an aircraft battle carrier group into the Mediterranean Sea. To make things worse, nuclear powers US and China are on opposite sides of the Israel-Gaza conflict. All of this is fertile ground for World War III. In the next few minutes, you'll learn a few things. Number one, why in my view, even though a World War III looks very possible, it is actually quite unlikely. Number two, why even a potential nuclear war doesn't really make sense. And number three, let's say if it does really happen, what you can do as an investor. By the way, this video will have never happened without my good friend Aaron. Go check out his substack in the comment section or description. Let's start with the Israel-Gaza conflict. But before that, I just want to let you know that I'm not going to be touching on the politics of the issue. I'll just be focusing on the fact, what's relevant to the investor and what I think is likely to happen. Now, it needs to be said that the chance of a local conflict like this turning regional is not zero. However, it is, in my view, unlikely. Israel has a significantly larger military than Hamas in Gaza. They also have overwhelming technological superiority. This means a long and deadly fight where both sides have a lot of casualty is quite low chance. And historically, when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Israel has come out on top pretty quickly. Now you might be saying, well, this is just between Israel, a military uh, superpower, you can say, versus, uh, you know, Gazans who do not have as much resources. But what about the other Arab states in the region, especially their neighbours? Israel's nearest neighbours, Jordan, Egypt and Lebanon, actually invaded them in 1967. Back then, Israel was a lot weaker, but they still managed to win the war. At this point in time, obviously Israel is a lot stronger and going to war right now will just be a repeat. Geographically, Jordan actually needs Israel for their sea trade, as you can see from this map here. Internally, when it comes to Egypt, they are having an inflation crisis at the moment. A pretty big power in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia themselves, are actually having some trouble with Houthi rebels in Yemen. And to add, they are also having a cold war with Iran. The point is that all these countries that I mentioned above have their own issues going on and adding Israel to their list of problems is not the smartest thing to do. The biggest challenge for Israel would be Hezbollah in Lebanon, but this is where the US comes in with their aircraft carriers that they've sent to the Mediterranean. All these reasons are why I think that this conflict having a big spill over is quite unlikely. But of course, when it comes to World War, we cannot not mention China. What about them? To get straight to the point, China waging war with the US right now, they just can't afford it. For one, in order for a country to go to war, they need a lot of oil. Big country, big war, big amount of oil. Right now, 80% of China's oil actually comes through the Malacca Strait. This makes it easy for the US to restrict China's oil flow without much resistance. And a naval war between both countries will be very difficult for China because they lack experience. China can only produce about 28% of the oil that they need every year, to be precise, around 4 million barrels a day when they need about 14. Now, a possible solution to this would be China getting oil from Russia. If you didn't know, Russia and China at this point in time are pretty good friends because they both do not like the US. Let me get my friend Aaron to share with you why this might be a challenge. China currently does not have any crude oil pipelines with Russia. It does have a natural gas pipeline called the Power of Siberia Pipeline and is currently in the middle of building a second natural gas pipeline called the Power of Siberia 2 Pipeline with an estimated completion date of 2030. 
However, these, they are, these two are still just natural gas pipelines and not crude oil pipelines. There is currently a project in the works to build a crude oil pipeline from Russia to China. It is called the China Siberia Pipeline Number no. 3 project. However, this one has an even yet uncertain completion date as compared to even the power of Siberia 2, which is estimated to be completed by 2030. As such, it's quite challenging to see how China might be able to import enough oil from Russia anywhere in the medium term that will allow it to sustain a long war. Thanks, Aaron. Politics-wise, President Xi just removed two generals from their nuclear force. They wouldn't be shaking things up if they thought a war is on the horizon. However, more importantly, the current generation leading China, including President Xi, grew up during the Cultural Revolution and Great Famine in the 60s. They know what it's like to suffer. And a war right now would just push China and the whole world into a new era of suffering. And I like to think that Chinese leaders are quite rational. So at least in the next 5 to 10 years, or at least until the current leadership ends, a war between the China and US would be quite unlikely and quite silly in my view. But then you might say, okay, maybe China is rational, but what about Russia? Put simply, Russia and the US will not be going to war, or most likely, for the same reasons that the USSR, the old name for Russia or the Soviet Union, did not go to war. The big reason is called Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD for short. Aaron is back again to tell you what MAD is. MAD is a nuclear war doctrine which ensures that both countries will be destroyed if either side decides to begin a nuclear war. This involves both countries simultaneously launching one th hundreds if not thousands of nuclear equipped ICBMs each other, 10 aim at each key city of the opposing country. This will all but assure that by the end of the day, both countries will be completely destroyed and represents a significant deterrent for beginning a nuclear war. This is also why the Cold War between the US and USSR never devolved into a nuclear war because it ensures mutually assured destruction. If you enjoy these kind of topics, please visit my newsletter at valueinvesting.substack.com. Once again, thanks Aaron for the explanation. The point is, war between Russia would be quite crazy and it will assure that both sides will not survive. Basically, suicide. All the reasons I mentioned above are pretty much why I think a World War III is quite unlikely and a lot of these conflicts will be contained to, at best, their region. That said, as investors, we always need to prepare. Although I think World War III will not happen, the question is, what do I do if it does happen? What if it does happen? There are many ways to go about it, but here's what I would be doing. The first thing to realize, and it might be the most obvious thing to you, is to go 100% cash. While this makes sense on paper, it's actually quite difficult to execute in real time. And I don't mean just selling a stock. What I'm trying to say is that when you do go 100% cash, Timing the market, figuring out the bottom is actually really, really difficult. And in fact, I will even say it is an impossible task. So what I would do is perhaps go partially cash, right? 40%, 50%. If we identify something that is close to the bottom, we have cash or dry powder to deploy. And if we do miss the bottom and we do not deploy the cash that we need to deploy, at least we are somewhat invested. The next thing is, okay, we talked about the cash. How about the invested portion? What kind of stocks I would be buying in this World War III scenario? For one, I will be investing is what is commonly known as defensive stocks. These are stocks that despite a recession, despite wars can actually do quite well. Some good examples are f and or food, healthcare, consumer staples, utility. To drill deeper, 
once I identify what sectors they are in, I will actually look at their numbers and the key or two key metrics that I want to look at is number one, are they free cash flow generative? Do they generate more cash than they need? And number two, are they paying out a dividend so that I get more cash to invest during a downturn? Oh yeah, go is an option too, of course. <laughs> And as far as uh, Chinese stocks, I probably won't be holding them. I hope you found this video useful in your preparation for World War III. And as usual, stay calm and invest.